at that time in my program, only two adjuncts professors, meaning part-time professors, would like to be online. Everyone else wanted to be in person. Now, for the spring semester, we did call the professors again in uh, September. What do they prefer? No one said we would like to teach in person, but they did not object. That tells you that there is a shift in the mindset of the instructors, at least, that maybe it is more convenient for them, it is more efficient, it is less uh, travel time, it's saving money in parking, or whatever it is. And they have experience now on uh, online. Everybody has to do it online, you know, for the spring uh, and the summer. So I think there is a shift in the mindset. Although professors are saying they don't mind to teach online or in person, but there is a preference to online. For the fall semester, we uh, provided technology for HyFlex. I'm sure you are familiar with HyFlex. In the HyFlex, you know, we give the students the choice of either being in person or to be live online. So we had the technology, we spent uh, a lot of millions of dollars. The last number I heard of is about 20 million. I don't know if that figure is correct or not. So to have our students come in person, but the people who cannot or who don't want to come in person, they can, they can participate live with the classes. That's the IFLEX. The challenges that we faced actually as instructors mostly will be problems with the technology. Sometimes the connection is poor or in some parts of the world because we have a lot of international students, for example, uh, they have problems connecting. It depends where you are in which country, etc. The time zone is we don't have the same time, time zone. We solve that problem that we all our lectures or our discussions are recorded and students can go and can listen to them at any point in time. And here comes, you know, a lot of people we found that they don't want to share their uh, photos. Legally speaking, we cannot force the students to show their photos because we can see the interaction with them. So they are off the camera. And a lot of uh, templates or uh, technologies, they don't show you all the faces at the same time. It depends what you are using, whether you are using Zoom, or this uh, technology actually, or WebEx, or Blackboard, or whatever it is. And the most challenging is the testing. How are you going to test them, and how you are going to make sure that there is no cheating or something like this? And here comes, you know, the creativity of the instructor, how you test the students, what kind of questions you ask, whether you put more weight on the participation, on the presence, something like this. But also we did found that some issues, I called it here, between differences between undergraduate and the graduates. At George Washington University School of Business, we have a lot of international students. And most of them, especially the graduate programs, they would like to network with others. They prefer to be in person. We lost a lot of students, if you want, because we shifted to online in the fall, and we are going to be online also for the spring. For the undergraduates, they prefer to be in person. It's strange. When we did the survey for undergraduate students, more than 84%, they said they prefer to be in person. That was back in the spring. For the fall semester, the government of DC did not allow us to be in person. That's why we went online. And now we asked the students again for housing, for example. We did have only 500 students on campus you know, because of their situations, we opened the campus for 500 students. For the spring, we opened it up for 1,500 students. We are, you know, uh, we are very ready for a lot of students. And uh, only 1,100 students would like to be in person or to live on campus at least. So you can see that the people now or the mindset is not settled yet. I do believe that it depends on the students. For undergraduate, they will continue to prefer to be on campus for the college experience. And for the graduate students, I think 
they some of them they continue to like online for example or hybrid or iflex whatever it is and uh, maybe it depends on the work they are doing also, there is a difference in preference between whether they are degree students or continuing education students. Continuing education, we classify them as, uh, for example, executive programs with no credits or attending some courses or something like this. We have also some issue about legalities, approval of degrees. In some countries, as you may know, they do not approve degrees if you have more than a specific percentage of courses online. So if that doesn't change, that will put restrictions on the preference of universities, as well as students, you know, to whether follow online or in-person things. So I do believe that all those methods are used everywhere in the world, but whether or what we are going to settle on, I do believe that all of them will continue to exist in the future. And it depends on the country, it depends on the university, it depends on the technology, it depends on their budgets, et cetera those variations will change. And also it depends on their demographics of students. I will stop here. I prefer to take questions at the end and then I would like to ask Daria now to take it over. Thank you for listening. Thank you, George. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and part of this uh, great 3D convention and the part of this roundtable discussion. I would now try to share my screen with you. Can you see it? Yes. 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 Clear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would like to share with you my experience and experience of my institution, Romanosov Moscow State University Business School on how we have been dealing with moving classrooms virtual, what challenges we faced and solutions proved to be good, successful. And the main challenge that we were facing and the question that I would like to elaborate a little in my presentation is how to deliver online and undergraduate program in entrepreneurship, which was designed uh, to be purely on the ground program. Like many other educational institutions all over the world, in March 2020, we had to make a rapid shift towards distance learning. And because it was so quick, uh, we had very little time on planning and reflection, and we had to deal with numerous administrative level decisions simultaneously. How to adapt our faculty, how to exams online, to interactions with businesses, uh, how to provide students with internship, how to serve international students that were prevented from entering the countries and so on. Time continuous networking with colleagues and knowledge sharing proved to be very effective. Try to stay flexible and seek for creative solutions together and prepare for various scenarios. And when moving classrooms online, we understood that the biggest gap that uh, needs to be filled in is that of the instructor. Uh, we were really lucky to have one week before campus closure to adapt our curriculum to the new environment of instruction. And what we did, we implemented a one week training course for faculty and staff on software and a workshop which, uh, through which best practices could be shared among uh, faculty. And during this uh, transition to online learning, uh, our understanding of quality has changed. Because the initial focus actually lay within serving students who were prevented from entering the class physically, how to keep them uh, in pipeline, how to keep the semester going. Uh, but then we realized then that emergency remote teaching is not the same than uh, that uh, online learning. The emergency remote teaching is something that, that wasn't uh, planned to be uh, online from the beginning. It's rather a temporary alternative that can be used and then can be easily eliminated as soon as the crisis is over. For us, it was pretty uh, quick to set up this new uh, online environment, but it didn't meet up our quality standards. Um, and uh, as understanding that remote instruction and online teaching is not the same, uh, pushed us back to our mission, to rethink our mission, who we are, what type of leaders we educate, uh, what can create value for our students, and how can we meet new students' expectations. And with understanding quality as value, we started uh, working out uh, what can be components of a well-designed online learning experience. 
since 2019, uh, we are delivering uh, an undergraduate program in management with a focus on entrepreneurship, called business administration and entrepreneurship. Uh, it was designed to meet the um, demands of the local markets for new entrepreneurial leaders. In the context of uh, the COVID-19 crisis, it uh, even proved to be more relevant. Uh, today, uh, uh, this summer, we, uh, we experienced increased number uh, in admission. Anyway, the program was designed to be really interactive and presumed that students were deeply immersed in business environment, in business interactions. And with this remote mode of delivery, uh, it has questioned actually if good results can be achieved here in this program. However, with challenges often come opportunities. And as soon as uh, our faculty realized that uh, replicating online uh, what they normally did in a face-to-face -face teaching was not a, a very good and efficient strategy, uh, they began to discover uh, new horizons and to use uh, different kind of supplementary tools. They began to experiment with small group work, with project-based learning and recording short videos. And they started to explore pedagogy, which is based on design. Um, many of our, of our lectures use open education resources, uh, different types of materials, labs, videos, simulations, games, uh, everything that can help uh, students uh, to be more engaged in the class. Uh, basically, what uh, all the faculty agree on is that following components should be carefully considered uh, to make uh, an online course successful. Algorithm, it's problem solving, personalization and assessment. Uh, speaking about algorithm, it's pretty obvious that uh, one of the main challenges of online format uh, is that it can be really dull for students and dry. Students are not involved and uh, a professor cannot rely on his charm and in-person connections anymore so much, uh, that much. And what is left is just pure content and uh, interactive activities. And we tried to reformat our courses to accommodate them to live virtual delivery by incorporating uh, different tools, such as interactive surveys, word clouds, algorithms, uh, and so on. These digital tools can be also used as time savers. For example, when we want a student to quickly master some routinized task or learn key concepts, can be digital media resources, uh, open resources, animations, virtual labs, surveys like Kahoot, different online platforms like Mentimeter, Miro, and many others. Creating these tools helped to adapt uh, to a new pace of virtual teaching because it is different uh, from face-to-face -face teaching. And it saved time and left more room for creative thinking and for problem solving in the class. It also can be applicable not only to courses, but for example, interacting with companies. Uh, we started using BCV platform as a tool for interviewing students. It saves companies time significantly when selecting students for work-based placement. And also it's uh, real fun for students, they like it to use. We had also very positive experience using different mind maps technologies. Uh, they are available for free on different platforms. Size uh, provides, uh, provokes students to think independently, to structure new material, to identify um, different linkages between different uh, phenomena. They also can be applicable to different uh, courses. But students' activity, intellectual activity, and rise of critical thinking uh, is not enough, uh, I think, to develop an entrepreneurial mindset. There should be emotions. Uh, students should learn from observing different behavior models. And we were trying to answer the question how students can obtain knowledge and then make it personal and develop a certain behavioral skills. And luckily, our alumni association was here to help. Together, we launched a mentorship program with alumni association. And in this case, remote learning platforms enabled to um, involve alumni to, to play a more prominent role in many aspects of our curriculum, because actually they saved time. Uh, they reduced the time cost for this in, of this involvement. Uh, association is involved in every aspect of curriculum, and it is especially helpful for uh, courses which are skill-based. Also, it does a greater thing, I think, because it builds the sense of community and social presence, which is so challenging to keep in virtual space, and which is really crucial for educating leaders uh, and going in line with school's mission. 
So I wouldn't say that we actually found the best possible strategy for teaching our students in time of crisis. Uh, but we are in constant search for best practices and solutions. And uh, in my opinion, the key lesson that we learned is that to keep strong, you can't be waiting for crisis just to be over. Uh, you can't dream about things to get back to normal. And the only way to keep strong is to invent the future. Try to learn how to live under these new circumstances. So that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. And I will give the floor to, the, to another speaker now. Thank you, Daria, for your presentation. Okay, so now it's me. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let, let me share the camera so that you can see me. I don't know if it's working. Okay. So there you are. Hello. Uh, I'm sitting here in a classroom at EIA. So let, let me first introduce you very briefly. Um, uh, my name is Joaquin Azque, and I'm the Associate Dean for, uh, for graduate, uh, graduate programs here at, at AIA. AIA uh, is a business school, a Spanish business school, which uh, has campus both in Madrid and Barcelona. And uh, we have most of our students, our international students coming from, from abroad from Latin America and from the rest of Europe and from Asia also. No? Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the challenge that we ha that we faced, uh, because obviously uh, all, all, all of our teaching is done uh, on premises, and we have uh, somewhere around like uh, 1,500 1, students in Barcelona and then more than 2,000 in, in Madrid. And, uh, and the pandemic started in... in um, last year, in March, at the beginning of the year, um, all of a sudden we have this, this, this breakthrough that we had to, to, to change very fast and, and, and we had to adapt really, really fast. Uh, when I try to remember what happened in, in Spain, uh, it, was, it was March, it was the beginning of March, and, uh, and all of a sudden um, the government told us that we had to stay home. I can still remember my, my, my older son, he lives in Cadiz, and, and he came, uh, and, he, and he was able to get a flight to come back to, to Barcelona. Uh, I don't know how he made it, but, but he got the flight, and, 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 and we were told to, to, to be for the lockdown on Friday, and I had to pick him up uh, um, Friday night uh, at the airport. And I can still remember Barcelona, uh, there were no cars at all. I just crossed the city with no cars at all. Uh, I reached the airport, there was no cars in the airport. Uh, it was only my son uh, there, and it was nine in the evening, and it was something like, a, like if a nuclear bomb or something like that had fallen over us. No, I, I, I just, something amazing. I've never seen that, or Barcelona that empty. No? And then all of a sudden, uh, we were told on, on, on Thursday that we had to shut down. And uh, so what we did is the following day, we started uh, training all our teachers so that they could comply to, to teach online, which was really, really a very, very, very big challenge because we have only in Barcelona, we have more than, than uh, 400 teachers. Uh, it is true following what Daria has said, that, that it is very important that you that you are somehow already prepared and 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 because we in in the past we've been doing also hybrid programs we already had um, a good platform to teach online uh, so for that reason uh, it was not so difficult but the reality is that uh, from one day to the other having been locked down on on Thursday on Monday all the lessons were being uh, delivered uh, uh, online which was a big, big challenge. Obviously, it was also a challenge for the students, very big challenge for the students, because in most cases, there were people coming from all around and they, 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 and they, they rent their flats here in Barcelona, but when they are locked down, they have to stay by themselves. Some of them just rent a flat by themselves and far away from their families. It was a very, very big challenge. And, 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 and somehow we all were able to comply. And I think um, and I think there are some lessons that I want to tell you about that one, which we are now following, because now, even when the big confinement, even when the big lockdown has finished, still here in Spain, as you know, uh, we have a partial lockdowns and we have to follow very uh, strict 
security uh, measures, so we can't have all of the, all of the students at the same time at, at, at the classroom. We have to divide them in different groups, etc. So still we have this big challenge, and I would like to 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 give you some of the lessons uh, that, that probably we have learned. No, I think that the most important one is that uh, when something like this happens, you have to be creative and, and, and the teachers and everyone has to start thinking how to do things differently in a very fast way. So it's all about uh, adaptation and it's all about uh, being able to use digital tools in the best way possible. Uh, of course, we, we try to train them. Of course, we do uh, a lot of, of tutorials, etc. But at the end, uh, at the point of time, the teacher has to be uh, has to defend uh, their lessons and he has to find out the way to do it. No, uh, and then you discover things that you have never used. In my case, just to give you a very simple example, uh, just like uh, two months before everything started, I have bought a new a new laptop, which is the one I'm using now, and it's one of these uh, uh, Microsoft uh, Surface computers, which is at the same line like a tablet and that you can use one of these uh, uh, electronic pens. And I didn't know if I was going to use that so much. Uh, but then all of a sudden, as the pandemic started, uh, I realized uh, that one of the challenges I had, I, I teach maths for the uh, undergraduate students because we have also undergrad undergraduate students on business administration and I teach maths to the, to the younger ones. Uh, so then I realized uh, this was a fantastic tool. No? And I'm, I'm going to show you for example, the, the, the lesson I, 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 I've been teaching this, mo this morning, just before this session, let me show you. And and nobody taught me how to do this, but I just did by myself. No, uh, let me see if I can show you. You can can you see there? So this is the lesson I was teaching this morning, uh, and as you can see, uh, I use massively the pen. No, so 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 I I, I can I, I can draw. Once again, whatever function. No, and, and then I, and I can come and I, and I can show my students how to how to draw this function. No, something like this. Maybe I can use different colors. No, so I can do like this. And. Um, whatever no so and, and 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 the point to show you this the point why, why i wanted to show you this basically is just because it's about uh it's just to, it's just to come to show that uh there are many things that that you will have to do uh by yourselves but um but that this is the main point it's about trying to find out how to solve things and 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 all the time all the teachers come up with new solutions. The teachers that tell me, I am using the discussion forum so that the students that are online home uh, can follow and they can uh, and they can ask questions. Uh, or another teacher says, I am using, uh, every morning I do an announcement through, through the Blackboard platform and I tell them exactly what is the plan of what I'm going to do today. Or there are teachers who tell me, I, I am asking my students to bring their computers so that even the ones that are in classroom, they can connect and, and share directly with the ones online. Or so every, all the time, new, new inventions. Um, and, and, and this, uh, this uh, situation is basically about creativity and about bringing uh, new ways to do things. Uh, each one of us as teachers, each one of us as, as, as educators, no? Um, then, um, and then the other, the other thing which I would also uh, encourage you to, to understand is that uh, all this wouldn't have been possible if we wouldn't have had uh, all these internet connections. So that's also very, very important. And I think all the investments that your school can do on, on, on having uh, a, a powerful connections to internet and on technology, once again, like Daria said, uh, it will always come on to advantage. And maybe just to finish my conversation, the last thing I would tell you is that uh, further from teaching uh, part of what we do online, uh, what we used to do on premises, also we are creating new programs and we are creating programs which are hybrid programs. And I think that's also uh, a very important part of the future because maybe we, we will not be able to expect uh, students to be all the time with us. And then we will know that we will need to do programs in which we will have to combine uh, online uh, online uh, areas with online with uh, with on premises 
uh, areas also. Uh, if there's any question you have, uh, I will be happy to, to answer. Thank you. Uh, that's, that's all on my part. Thank you. Let's applause to Joaquin Ascur. Thank, Thank you very you. much for your speech. Do you have some questions? Don't hesitate to raise your hand or to write uh, your question in a public chat. Well, okay, if it's no questions, yeah. I guess that's uh, my part now. Yeah. Okay, I'm just uploading um, uh, the slides on the tool, so it's just converting. And I'm going to try also to, well, maybe I need to click there. Um, telling saving conversion, generating HTML. Yes, it works. Okay, and I'm gonna try there just to share my webcam. Okay. Well, uh, hello everyone. I'm really happy to, to be there uh, with you on uh, this uh, platform uh, because uh, I'm going to, to present you uh, uh, why and how we are using technology at Neoma Business School. Uh, to, to make the, it very short uh, in terms of presentation, I'm Alain Goudet, Chief Digital Officer of Neoma, and Neoma is based in France on three uh, physical campus, Reims, Rouen, and Paris, and we have uh, opened our fourth campus, which is a persistent virtual uh, campus. Why we are doing all of that and using um, technology? Of course, and I'm going to be very fast on that, the world has already changed. I mean, uh, here you can see uh, how I see the world with all these platforms and all these uh, ocean of data. And definitely we need to uh, educate and teach our students about these uh, new aspects uh, of the world. The other topics is that we are facing a huge competition, not necessarily inside our higher education sector, but from outside um, our sector. Because if you are looking for uh, an information, if you are looking for uh, a tool, or if you are looking uh, for people, you can access all of that through the different platforms with a very simple and easy tools to use that you always have in the pocket, your smartphone. And also, we are facing another uh, big challenge uh, concerning our students is their attention. I mean, the human attention is not necessarily uh, far better from this goldfish. Uh, it has been assessed to uh, be a level of attention around eight seconds, and it's going down uh, years by years. So as professor, we definitely need to uh, stimulate uh, and to engage our students in the different uh, class or seminars. So basically we are living uh, definitely uh, the momentum of disruption of the higher education sector. And I do believe that the greatest danger uh, in that period is not the turbulence of what we are living with the COVID uh, crisis, but it is definitely much more to act with uh, yesterday's uh, habits. That's why we are trying to innovate uh, at Neoma Business School, and we do believe that learning is experience. And if you are doing something else, uh, you are just uh, proposing information. And if you are only on information, of course, the internet has already won uh, the battle of uh, attention. So that's why, for instance, and I'm going to, to present you two uh, innovations. The first one is a bit old for us because we are using since four years ago, um, the virtual reality technology inside business case. And for instance, we have uh, produced uh, now it's free VR-based case study. The first one was in marketing and definitely the session is about a free hour session in the classroom. And the idea of using this technology is to bring an a, 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 um, efficient uh, managerial context right in the classroom. And what do we ask to the students? First of all, we are asking them to take a virtual trip 
of uh, the, the location they, uh, they can visit. Here, uh, it's uh, a, um, a downtown uh, retail shop that is called Cinetic, and which is based in Reims. And they have, uh, as the new head of this retail shop, to make a visit of the retail shop. That means analysis, the whole outlet, but also uh, trying to understand what's happening in terms of interaction with customers and uh, um, sales force inside uh, the shop. And we are asking students, first of all, to make uh, an individual uh, critical analysis of all the situation. Then we ask them to uh, come to a consensus uh, concerning um, the, the key issues of um, the shop. And last but not least, we are asking them to make a um, um, proposition in terms of improving the shop. What is really interesting on this uh, thing, and I won't be uh, too long on that, but the first topic is that we are canceling the learning routine. I mean, when they come into the class, they uh, are facing up a, a new way of learning. And of course, the engagement is really high. We also have uh, the topic of physiological uh, commitment because with VR, you are definitely immersed in uh, the managerial context. And that's really interesting to uh, uh, see that because students are acting like in the real world. I mean, uh, inside this uh, business case, you are not telling the students, first of all, to do that, and then to do that, and last but not least, to do that, and so on. Uh, they are acting just like in the real life, and they can go uh, wherever where they want inside the shop, but also however uh, they want. And if they want to uh, start from uh, the, the back office, of course they can. Last but not least, uh, they are experiencing all of that individually before working uh, with the group. And that's really interesting, you know, to act in short cycles between theory and practice. If you want to have theory, that's very easy. Students only remove their VR headsets. And if you want to go on practice, they're just putting on the VR headsets. So as I said, we are running that for four years ago now, and it means several thousands of our students that have uh, faced this kind of technology. And the good news, and if you want to exchange on that later on, uh, we are proposing also to our partners and worldwide universities or business school uh, to uh, be able to run this VR-based uh, 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 technology and business case. The second innovation, and that's very funny uh, uh, to be there uh, at uh, Edu Universal uh, Convention, because we have launched at the very beginning of September uh, what we are calling the Neomap Assistant Virtual Compass. And as you can see, that's almost uh, the same experience on what you are living right now. Um, the idea is there to have our fourth compass fully online in a persistent world. That means if you are connected or not, the world is still uh, living with or without you. And that's really interesting uh, to, to, to be able to run this kind of compass because due to the context, of course, these tools, uh, as you can experience uh, these days with the Edu Edu Universal Convention, is that you can uh, have uh, everyone of the community uh, gather at the same times in the same place and share uh, different kind of experiences. So we are doing that with our all community. Uh, that means our 9,000 uh, students and our 600 uh, staff members and faculty members. And the idea of that is, of course, being together while being distant. We are relying on different kind of theories on that. Uh, the first one is embodied cognition, and the other one is extended self. And I won't go far on that, but. Basically, being represented by an avatar is uh, really interesting because uh, you are raising less fatigue and you also have more fun concerning all what's happening online. The other topic is, of course, to bring back this time the Neoma Business School campus directly at home of our students. And we are importing all these usual cognitive schemes, that means uh, if you want to have a, a global briefing with all your class, that's very easy, just as we are running this uh, um, roundtable. And if you want them to work by uh, groups, you can set up 
um, the confidential circle and they can work all together without the other groups uh, um, uh, hearing them. So you are bringing back more fluidity, more spontaneity in the exchanges, in the class, and we are leaving that also in uh, um, a way of proposing a real and concrete experience of what could be uh, one kind of future of work. And we have had so many uh, uh, companies that ask us for a return on experience on that, because again, we are running that for all our community on uh, uh, the Neoma Business School. And our proposal here was to revisit uh, online learning because as uh, other speakers said, uh, we were much more on an emergency learning. And basically what we've learned from our first lockdown is that all these traditional vis video conferencing tools are not necessarily really, really good to propose a really nice uh, uh, teaching uh, experience. And we would like to propose something else. I mean, an alternative, trying to uh, hybrid uh, the best of being online and also quite the best of uh, the, the habits we could have uh, offline on our physical campus. So as I said, it's, it concerns uh, all of our, our community. And beyond the tool, we, are, we have got partnership with Laval Virtual uh, to hybrid the culture uh, between our students at Neoma and also their own community, much more dedicated to uh, immersive technologies. So uh, this uh, innovation uh, has been launched quite recently. So of course we got some figures and uh, some issues about the impacts on our community. And we are going to share all of that with um, the higher education community. But what we are already sure about is that all of that, this fourth campus is going to uh, exist after uh, the coronavirus uh, crisis because we are running this as our fourth campus and you got so many positive impacts concerning this kind of experience uh, that uh, um, leads all, uh, that leads us to uh, create a new a lot of innovation and uh, activities for our students. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much for your interventions. Let's applause to all our speakers. Come on, don't be shy. Okay, do you have some questions, dear audience? It was a really very interesting topic, so. So we have several questions. Question to first round participants. Can learning platforms like Coursera over compete higher education institutions, regular programs? The question you can see is from Tatiana in a public chat. So who wants to answer? I did not hear that question well. Oh, sorry. Can you now? Can you hear? Yes. Can learning platforms like Coursera overcompete higher education institutions' regular programs? I personally am not familiar with Coursera. I am familiar with other things, uh, you know, but I think any platform will be acceptable to be used in higher education. Now you need to have, you know, the right training and the right approach how to deliver the information. Uh, at uh, George Washington University, we have a special office actually for instructional design. It has been there for about 20 years. So we have professional online teaching, et cetera, that has been in place for lo so long. So the template I think, or the mean is not that important, maybe it is someone is more efficient than others, et cetera, whatever, but it really depends on what or how you are going to teach it. Um, maybe if I can add something, um, 
I think that um, um, I, I think that obviously uh, Coursera is a different context to, to Coursera or, or, or edX or, or whatever. It's a different context to, 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 uh, to a business school program in the sense that there is more like a, a, a very focused small programs to, to, to deliver a specific technical training, um, technical uh, topics, and uh, technical not, not, in, not in the sense of, of technology, but in the sense of, of a specific knowledge. And, and in that sense, it's, not, it's a, quite a different context because obviously in a business school, it's much more about networking, it's about the experience. Um, uh, I always tell my students that, um, that it may seem, seem sound a little bit cynical, but obviously uh, that uh, once they've spent one year in Barcelona, if I come back to them like from 10 years from now, uh, most probably they won't remember anything I have told them in, 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 in the classrooms. But for sure they will remember of the one year they spent in Barcelona and all the friends they made, and all the experience that implied, no, and all the networking they did. So I think it's a different context to, to Coursera. But uh, once that's said, uh, I think it is very naive to think from the business school point of view that uh, that platforms like Coursera are not going to compete with us because they are. <laughs> but they are, of course, they are going to compete with us. And and students that uh, uh, that can solve their their training problem with a platform like Coursera. This, the, the, it is obvious that they are going to do it also, no? So we need to be aware of that. And I think one of the most important learnings in, in digital transformation is that what's happening is going to affect all of us. It's, there's, there is no business that is not going to be affected by this big revolution. And of course, the platforms like Coursera are part of this big revolution. They imply that you have uh, all kinds of knowledge uh, for free there, no? Um, if, if, if you want to be honest with yourselves, you need to admit that probably most of the lessons that any of your professors teach in your business schools, you can find uh, equivalent uh, lessons in YouTube for free. <laughs> this is a reality, you know? So, so, of course, it's going to compete with us one way or other. I, I also agree with uh, Joaquin that uh, this uh, online education and resources and platforms like Coursera are going to compete with the business schools and the universities. Uh, already an obvious trend uh, that uh, education is uh, moving to uh, become more open up and more accessible for learners. Still, I'd like to believe that uh, uh, these online platforms and resources won't replace uh, universities uh, just because uh, uh, university is something more than the number of courses that students uh, obtain even if it's a quality co courses uh, it's uh, like a cultural phenomenon and uh, students uh, uh, while entering the university and uh, graduating from the university they uh, receive something uh, some extra value not just skills get from the courses but it's like a um, mindset uh, developing a special mindset and networking as Joaquin mentioned and so I quite agree with that why well, I hope that they won't uh, be able they're they uh, quite competitors but uh, they won't be able to replace uh, universities Thank yeah. you but I have much. something now I understand what Coursera is sorry that I misunderstood what it was I agree with Dari actually that uh, you know there will be very little competition I think in terms of contents, interaction, the approach, the pedagogy, it will not be the same. Thank you very much for your answers. And we have one more question from Tatiana to Alain. Uh, so if you can share this information, how big investments are required of, uh, for a virtual campus? Well, uh, I won't share with you uh, uh, the, the whole budget on that, but uh, it's a matter of uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of euros because uh, we are running a, a, a full virtual test system campus. That means we've got a building uh, uh, from Neoma Business School with more than 45 uh, um, offices, classrooms, auditoriums, and so on. And we are going 
there with uh, around 9,000 of our students. So it's a bit expensive, but uh, beyond um, the budget, I mean, it takes time because it's really a matter of vision and just to make the gap uh, between the, the, the first question, uh, I do believe that some of these Coursera or whatever uh, digital uh, uh, learning uh, platform can and are competing with us and they are a real threat for us. And I do believe, as it was said, that we need and we can provide something else. And that's why we are uh, focusing on what I've called uh, earlier um, the learning experience. And you can run uh, and propose all these learning experience in very various ways. And of course, we these ways are much more uh, uh, maybe complex and much more better and efficient than only learning on a, 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 a computer screen. And I do believe that running this kind of uh, innovation like VR-based case study or the virtual persistent compass are uh, um, somewhat a way uh, to propose something else than only what Coursera is proposing right now. So again, it's a matter of finance, but it's also a matter of vision of culture in your organization and also a matter of uh, spending time because it takes time to have all your community switching uh, to uh, this kind of platform with this 3D world and virtual interaction through an avatar. Uh, it's really interesting. Again, we got uh, two months uh, with our uh, private uh, online campus, but uh, it helps us, for instance, on welcoming our international students that could not come on our physical campus. And that was really amazing to have all these students from uh, China, India, and wherever uh, to meet uh, together uh, into uh, a class at the same time in the same place, just as if they were on our uh, real Neoma Business School campus. Thank you very much for your answers. And also I want that you pay attention that Alain share the link in our public chat. So if you want to know more about VR business cases or our res uh, resistant virtual campus, please follow this link that is uh, in the public chat. Uh, dear audience, do you have more questions? So, Michael asking, uh, did, any, um, did anyone speak about online internships? If so, anything useful you can share with those of us considering how best to implement this option? About online internships, uh, yes, speakers, uh, would you like to add something? Yeah, we, we, we did something in, in, in the EIA Business School. In, in, we did something. There were some uh, companies that were interested in this, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it was quite an interesting program. So, so uh, it was, in a sense, also a way to... to, to um, uh, to keep our students focused also, no? Uh, because uh, when the pandemic came, this idea that they have to go online most of the time was not so good, but uh, but we were capable of uh, capable of achieving this idea of, of uh, virtual internships yeah. with some companies. I don't remember uh, what was these companies, but important companies in Spain, uh, and they were able to keep uh, to keep uh, to keep on record. I don't know if, if uh... yeah, Camila, uh, one was. Um... Human resource um, company, like um, there was a big, an important uh, human resources consultancy, uh, and and, and uh, uh, that that uh, that was interested in having an uh, internship. Wine. There was also a, a, an important wine producer, Spanish wine producer. Uh, well, they, they did projects on different topics, yes. topic uh, projects on HR, projects on strategy, on marketing. So so yeah. it, it did work, and and and, and in a sense it. it it was a good idea because it helped us to, to cope with, with this big problem, no? Because of course, most of those companies uh, were already working online. Uh, most of the, of the people working there, obviously in the business, in the, uh, in the management positions, uh, but, uh, but yeah, it, it happened. So if you have more information about that one, maybe you can email me and, uh, and I can give you a link to, to the information we had uh, in, on our website on that one. If you're interested, and maybe you can uh, get more, more information for that. But we, we have a whole area 
uh, on professional development in, in the school, which helps the students to get these internships. And, and, and yes, they did, did do so. Same thing at George Washington University, actually. A lot of our students, they did uh, online uh, internship. And uh, since everybody is working from home, so they are getting some uh, internships and they do the work at home and they, you know, they communicate by emails or, uh, you know, on live uh, discussions. Okay, thank you very much. As you can see in private chat, uh, in public chat, we see the email. So, so if somebody is interested, you can email to Hakim and to other of our speakers. Do you have more questions? If not, uh, let's move to our last learning and sharing session of today. It's a pleasure to introduce you to Mr. Janice Gravins, director of Riga Business School. Janice will lead a workshop, design thinking, creating space for creation. And I want you to do just a little announcement that after the presentation of Janice, everyone will have to leave the Laval Virtual Congress Center and to come back again on the platform to be able to benefit from uh, additional functions during the PIMS award ceremony. So you will just need to close the Congress and to enter again. Thank you very much.